This video was voted for by the members of my Discord server. If you want to vote on future videos and join our community, the link is in the description. You know, after Birth by Sleep had the worst Super Boss lineup in the whole series, you'd think that the Osaka team would take a step back and give a different and better approach to these fights in their next game. Well, we would have to wait another 7 years to see that change in approach, because Judas is the one Super Boss a dream drop distance and to pull it bluntly, he sucks. While I don't think Julius is the worst super boss, he's definitely up there as one of my least favourites in the franchise, as it feels as if nothing was learnt from the mistakes of Birth by Sleep super bosses. In fact, I would go as far to say that Julius feels like a leftover from a Scrap Mirage arena battle, which is not a good thing at all as those fights are atrocious. Once again, almost everything you have learnt across Dream Drop Distance is thrown out the window, and the main strategy to beat Julius is to choose him. Which is a shame, as I feel he had some potential to be good, but what can you do? Firstly, I'd like to begin with the positives of the fight, as while it's a fairly short list, I think they should at least be considered when discussing a bad boss. For one thing, I like that this fight is set in Traverse Town's Fountain Plaza, which is quite a unique setting in comparison to most of the other super bosses throughout the franchise. There's just something about Traverse Town in Dream Drop Distance that is intriguing to me, and I don't really know why, so I'm glad it was chosen as the world to contain this fight in the end. I think that picking Julius of all characters to be a super boss in the first place is a refreshing change of pace. This is one of the few times in a series where we see a Disney character as a super boss, and Julius himself is a very obscure character, with his only appearance outside of this game being in the short Runaway Brain from 1995. He's a very bizarre pick, but one that I'm quite fond of. Also, I think the rendition of the encounter from KH2 that plays in this fight is pretty nice, but I can't exactly credit this game for it as it comes from Birth by Sleep. Here's a listen. It's too bad the list ends there, as everything else I have to say about the fight is negative. Much like other bosses such as the Mysterious Figure, there aren't many ways you are able to approach Julius without getting severely punished for it. Going for a regular combo is not worth it most of the time, as you'll only be able to land a couple of hits before he begins to retaliate again. Most physical commands you can equip in the command deck are quite weak against Julius, or they are simply too slow to use in this fight safely. As a result of this, a lot of Sora and Riku's exclusive commands are useless, like with the character exclusive commands in Birth by Sleep, because they will either be interrupted before they start, or even during the attack. Magic is not as impractical, but outside of one spell we will return to later in the video, there still aren't many uses for it. Thunder and Poison are not worth equipping in the first place, as Julius is immune to Poison and has resistance against Thunder. Others are about as weak as a lot of the physical commands, even at higher levels, and then there are some like Zero, Gravizer and Vanish which do not help you in this fight whatsoever. Your action commands are quite limited in use here too. Blocking is somewhat helpful, however in certain cases Julius is able to break your block without any signs of being able to do so. Dodge roll is serviceable for most of the fight, although due to Julius' speed he can catch up and hit you with ease, even when spamming it. None of the reprisals work well either, as they all leave you open to attack, and most of them in Dream Drop Distance are slow moves to perform anyways, so I don't see a point. Not even Flow Motion, which is never ineffective in this game, can save this fight. It has a few uses, such as being able to avoid Julius' ground hop attack, but otherwise it can only really be used to waste time avoiding him and not dealing any damage. But even then, the mechanic can still hinder you. For example, the lampposts in the arena are annoying to navigate around if they're not destroyed by Julius, and they can quickly land you in a combo that you can't escape. Flow motion attacks are not worth the effort to set up as well, because they do little damage against Julius and are more flashy than anything else. Beyond either Sora or Riku's moveset, Julius is incredibly frustrating. Like I mentioned earlier, he has an obnoxiously high speed for such a large boss, which makes it feel almost impossible to go the whole fight without getting hit by anything. He also only has two phases, but both are equally as bothersome. At the very least, he's an easy target, but you'll hardly be able to hit him with the moveset he has. If I had to briefly sum up Julius' moveset, I would say it is little, but irritating. He has a small moveset for a super boss, but the moves he has are annoying to say the least. It's not hard for Julius to get you to low health within a couple of hits, at least on proud mode, making once more required to have the best hopes of defeating him on higher difficulties. There are a couple of moves in particular I would like to highlight. 
For starters, his belch move gives blind, poison and confusion to the player all at the same time, which is bad enough, but on top of that, he can also stack this attack several times. Take this clip for reference, where I was grabbed by Julius four different times, with each inflicting its own set of blind, poison and confusion debuffs. Who at Square Enix approved of this? His second phase causes his moves to receive major buffs. Their range is increased by shockwaves on the ground and they are much more damaging than before, leading to even quicker deaths if you are not careful. But the most dreadful move is his lightning charge ground hops, which reset the reload of your selected command and multiply its reload time by 8, possibly disabling the command for the rest of your attempt at the fight. At least with other bosses that can remove commands like Mysterious Figure, you are able to get them back, but Julius just locks it completely and moves on. That's not even the worst part. He doesn't stop attacking. While the player has to put up with end lag on their basic attacks and commands, Julius is able to throw out move after move after move. But that's not all. As the cherry on top, Julius has 13 health bars to deplete, which is more than any other super boss in a handheld KH game. And the best of all, you have to do this fight twice to get 100% completion. I don't even want to imagine how much worse it was on the 3DS. This fight is insufferable! With all of that out of the way, you might be wondering how to defeat this boss, and if you've been paying attention throughout the video, you would see how the cheese method is done. Yes, it's with balloons. Balloon is by far the best magic spell in Dream Drop Distance, and the usage you can get from it in this fight proves that even more so. Both Balloon Rut and Balloon Gut are convenient for this fight, as they are fairly safe moves and have the ability to deal more damage than most other commands in the game. Most seem to prefer Balloon Rut for this fight, but I think Balloon Gut is a much more preferable choice as it has a higher chance to stun enemies than Balloon Rut does, and thankfully this higher chance still applies to Julius. Either way, they both trivialise most of the fight, so I would highly recommend using them to your advantage. Throw in a couple of Kuragas alongside them and you'll be good to go. For some other tips that I find work well with this strategy, I would disable all of Sora and Riku's flow motion abilities to avoid any accidental flow motion attacks or movements being used. Besides, you only really need the wall jump for this fight, so why bother with the rest, right? Also, I would steer clear from certain action commands such as Sonic Impact and Sliding Crescent, as to me, at least, they have only ever caused runs to go badly. That's about all I have to say on Julius. He's a terrible boss, and without a doubt he's in my top 5 worst super bosses of the series. What do you guys think of Julius? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I will have videos linked in the description where I beat Julius both with and without the cheese strategy, so I hope you enjoy those. But yeah, that's about it. See ya.